Okay, hi Aquarius, and welcome to your April 2022 general tarot forecast. Uh, this is Sky coming on to bring you a quick and uh, to the point reading this month. Um, it's a busy time for us all, so uh, let's move directly into your reading. I will be doing a uh, reading with intuitive messages, a week-to-week -week tarot forecast, and an extended reading for you as well on Patreon. If this one resonates, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you want to uh, get the extended reading, it will be linked below. And um, yeah, let's dive right in, Aquarius. Okay, so April 2022, I'll talk mainly about the Aries season part of it. Um, for you, um, I think that you have to see where, how Saturn is uh, treating you. So Saturn is really getting um, advanced into your sign. Um, you know, you've had a solid uh, about year, almost year and a half of having that presence. And now you've got to kind of understand what it's meant and um, what the impact of these new contracts or these new limitations, new uh, also uh, building processes, development processes that you have in your life, uh, where are they at? Uh, basically, this is a great month to take score. Uh, usually, I don't recommend that for Aries season, but for you, it's coming up. It's like um, you want to really get your ideas on pen and paper, and you want to um, have a very solid understanding of how much you like uh, your current experience and um, how you kind of value what you currently have on your plate. Uh, for everybody in April, there's a bit of a value crisis. Uh, what have I created? Who have I become? Uh, what identity have I kind of unknowingly perhaps stepped into with the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction uh, happening exact for the first time this month? Um, all of us are kind of like, wow, I didn't realize uh, that that's what I was becoming, or I didn't realize that uh, behind the smoke and mirrors or behind the marketing or behind the um, facade, there is actually something a little bit rotten or something a little bit uh, perfect, okay? And it might be very opposite to the way that it's presented. So we need to have a good x-ray vision. For those of you with any Scorpio in your chart, this will be easier, but everybody is really called upon to open the third eye right now to decalcify that pineal gland, to uh, make sure that they're working with their intuition in a healthy way. And I think that if you can work on that this month, Aquarius, you will be very far ahead because I think also with Justice Reversed, Five of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, Seven of Wands, there's just going to be some things, you know, it's Saturn in your sun sign, um, if you're a sun in Aquarius, Saturn on whatever you have in Aquarius, there's just going to be some things that feel limited or that don't feel fair, don't feel easy, don't feel... Um, benefic. And I think the only way to transcend these things or overcome some of these, um, uh, I don't know, conflicting parts is to understand what was unintuitive about the choices that got us here. Okay, so there's a bit of a regression work here for you, actually, surprisingly. And I've been interested to see that despite us being in a tiger year, maybe this is a part of water tiger, you know, maybe this is a part of... Um, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces, you know, we've got super fiery energy represented by the Tiger year, represented by Sun in Aries, uh, and uh, Jupiter will move into Aries later this year. Um, nonetheless, it's a very watery time, isn't it? Uh, water, Tiger, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces. So there is a regression. There is a new development of intuition and psychic ability here. And um, for you, maybe more than any other sign, because um, I think you're so faced with real kind of material world contractual difficulties that it almost forces you to offset it with something more intuitive and more emotive. Okay, so um, things to avoid or to watch out for in April, um, unemotional people, uh, apathy, um, not being able to understand like the emotional condition of like a business partner. Um, we can't just rely on the words on the paper, okay? We can't just rely on the contract. We can't just rely on all that being in order and, and uh, outsourced or delegated, but we need, we need to feel like we're connected to the path that we're on and like it's the right path, even if it's all good on paper, even if it seems to make sense in the long term. Does it feel right? Okay, I see a lot of people right now. The biggest error that I see of this time collectively is like people going against their intuition or people... Uh, having that kind of mindset like, well, I don't feel right about it, or I don't really 
have a positive idol or idling sensation with this path or this experience. But I know because I've had like a business advisor or I've had like a lawyer or I've had like an accountant tell me that this is how it works or I've had, you know, a friend or a spouse tell me that this is, you know, right for me. So I'm going to trust these outside sources. I'm not saying you don't need to trust them, but I just keep seeing what I'm really trying to pinpoint here is this kind of like backup mentality of like, even though I don't feel good about this, I know that it's right because other people have made it right for me. Um, that's something that we really need to see and overcoming of soon. Um, okay. Um, other intuitive message on the positive side for April. Um, you're going to really be able to see what's not working. You're going to really be able to zoom out with seven of pentacles and the hermit coming up, it's going to be very wise for you. Okay. You're going to get really wise this month. You're going to really get past the BS. You're going to really rise above the maze and um, see what you've got yourself involved in. And with that, it's going to really confirm your intuition one way or another. And this can go both ways. So like either you can be like, okay, yeah, I was right the whole time. I knew that that was what was going on. Or you can also be like, whoa, I did not have the correct intuition about that. Like my intuition was off. I'm also seeing a lot of people this month having, um, and this can be a good thing. It's not always a bad thing. Like, especially if we have a tendency to catastrophize or doom cast things, this is very possible um, during uh, these last few years and now. It can actually be nice to be like, wow, that worst case scenario that I predicted did not come true. That isn't that great. Um, so that can actually be a great silver lining for you this month is to um, be proven wrong and that be a positive thing. Uh, but we need to know. We ne it's a good time to take score and compare what did I feel about a certain situation and what did it yield? Okay, seven of pentacles. And what can I learn through this process? Such a beautiful month for lessons learned. Okay, Aquarius, let's talk about your week to week. Moving quickly. Okay, week number one, ace of wands rooted, rooted down by six of pentacles. I don't like that combination because it says to me that it, it's kind of like the singer who has the incredible talent just dying to get a really repressive like a uh, record label contract. You know, it's like trying to really contract out your talent and maybe there's a big payout there. Maybe there's a um, nice sum of money or um, maybe not. Maybe it's not what you think it is. Watch out for over obligating yourself. Everyone's doing this this month, and I'm like kind of having to see <laughs> in my own experience too how I've got to step back a little bit in certain places, and um, how like uh, the last year cycle, 2021, um, kind of really over obligated a lot of us, and um, we see in the first week of April how that stifles creativity and how it uh, kind of um, turns us into a robot or turns us into a like a factory worker in a sense. Okay. We need to see that in the first week, and we need to innovate with Ace of Wands a proper solution to this overworking tendency or this uh, hyper laborious. I've seen this for all the signs, Aquarius, probably sounding repetitive here. I keep talking about the collective and all the other signs, but it's crazy to me how in this cycle of the April readings, how similar it was for many of the signs and how um, I just kept getting this feeling like people are trying way too hard. People are doing stuff the hard way. People are reinventing the wheel. People are um, working hard and not working smart. And I understand sometimes we have to do that in our lives, but it's like all the data is here or all the uh, technology is here to make or allow us to innovate easier ways of getting by, but we're choosing to almost not work with that stuff or to um, not allow ourselves an easier time because maybe we're associating that hard work with a better payoff. Again, this is a dangerous association here in 2022 where we might think, okay, if I work 60 hours instead of 40 hours in the week, I'm going to meet my goal more quickly. Um, or sometimes we might think, um, if I create more, that means I get more, okay? Um, sometimes those two assertions are correct, but sometimes they're also not correct. Okay. Sometimes those two assertions are uh, leading us to a stress injury. They're leading us to a mental breakdown. They're leading us to, um, also oversaturation or over, uh, involvement in something and, uh, not diversifying our experience well enough. And that's more, it's the second part that I'm more so feeling that people are getting into in 2022. Uh, 2021 was a great 
time to have that and to make your life better through working really hard and pushing something through. But we needed to step out of that around like um, December actually of 2021. So um, first week I think is already going to be really spelling that out for you. And you have the innovative uh, capacity to get this stuff right. Week two, the hermit rooted down by five of pentacles, same exact thing. You have the knowledge and wisdom to overcome poverty consciousness. A lot of it, okay, am I going to talk about this? A lot of it is the uh, outlay or result of living in a crack up boom economy, okay, or moving towards that. We're not quite there yet, and, and hopefully that will be avoided. But um, a lot of this is just dealing with inflation. A lot of this is all economic in nature. Uh, so we think, wow, I've got to work more because I can't afford things or, you know, my currency is not going as far as it used to. And this leads us to start creating realities that we never would have or that we never had to. Um, so the moral of that is like, don't do it. Okay, don't let currency or money influence you too much. I mean, how can you say that? Like, how how is that possible? Doesn't currency influence everyone? I suppose it does, but we've got to make sure that it's not more than necessary or that we're not too much associating hard work with a financial outcome. Hard work should be associated with what we love. Hard work should be associated also with um, leveling ourselves up. And there is a money connotation there, sure, but it shouldn't be just about the money and it should not just be about um, bill paying or anything like that because then we void ourselves out of uh, desire and uh, manifestational capacity and we're going to end up just like kind of meeting our bases instead of moving <clears throat> ahead like we need to. Um, but in the second week, um, I recommend pulling back. I recommend um, saying less. I recommend kind of cutting costs or cutting out certain frivolity or uh, frivolous spending and also helping other people. So uh, volunteering for charities or donating to charities or uh, something that puts you into contact. So maybe not just donating, but it's like you need to also be in contact with the homeless or with uh, people who are um, really struggling more than you to understand how much you have and to cut back a little bit, okay? Uh, week three, you've got seven of pentacles, read it down by the page of cups, really beautiful, okay? Um, something switches for you in the third week and you zoom out and you get an emotional rebirth through really being able to take score of what you have. This is that really the epicenter of that uh, kind of taking score message that I was getting for you in the third week where um, you need to pay close attention to everything that you've got growing and um, it's so good to lighten it or prune it or to focus more on what's growing well. But diversity, okay, in every form is good. Okay, uh, we want to probably not just uh, grow one kind of flower, okay, um, because that means that they're all going to die at some time of the year and they're all going to grow at some time of the year. So that is fine and good with flowers, but it would be nice to have some growing year round, wouldn't it? Or it would be nice, you know, even chrysanthemums uh, bloom in the winter. Um, but if we're looking at more substantive things, like, I don't know, investments, you know, if we're just in one industry or even if we're just in one kind of way of, or paradigm of thinking about investing, it's all going to die or collapse simultaneously if it's not diversified or if it's not um, well arranged. So um, it's nice to really overcome that. And I think that seven of pentacles, I'm starting to understand that that archetype really is about diversity. And it's really about having multiple stakes and multiple uh, things that can work out for you. Okay, the moment that we commit everything to one thing, we're in a dangerous uh, place. Okay, uh, week four, you have the justice reverse rooted down by uh, seven of wands. Um, Okay, so Justice Reverse does keep coming up, and it has been for, I think, the last month or so. So I do think there's something maybe unjust going on um, in a lot of people's lives, or there's something imbalanced or something kind of, like, reactive. So in so Justice Reverse can represent um, uh, problems with legality, but it can also represent um, kind of 
what I like to say and what I've seen over uh, such a long time of working with the tarot, I've seen a lot of times with Justice Reversed, it's like um, overreactiveness. So not having a balanced response, like, for example, knowing that inflation is happening. So like going into a frenzy, trying to like buy gold or trying to buy land and it like messes up your entire kind of financial situation because you were so reactive to um, the fact that inflation is happening. And that's like what causes an eventual crack up boom economically um, is when people go into a desperate uh, level of demand to um, try to replace their uh, liquid assets with material assets, and uh, that causes an, a huge economic collapse. Um, so while many of us may not be thinking about things like that, try to think about in your life where that happens, where you're like reactive to a certain event, and it pushes you to do something you wouldn't have naturally done. So we have to make sure that we're doing our own actions, Aquarius. Uh, Saturn's in your sign. It's really teaching you this lesson. Like, did you want gold and land? Or did a certain external event trigger you to do it and take you out of your own natural course? We have to make sure we're um, in our own course here. Uh, Seven of Wands, reading that down. Um, so many opposition and conflict happens when we get off of our own course. You know, when we let external events rule us. And there's a balance to it, right? We can't be totally... Uh, distant from external events. We have to stay on our own course while appropriately navigating those external events. So that would be the main thing I would um, recommend for you this month to um, be open to learning about. <clears throat> and um, let's talk more about that in your extended reading, Aquarius. Beautiful reading here on YouTube. Um, I do these extended readings uh, every month for all the signs on Patreon, and you get all of them, all of the different readings with uh, tea chats and um, extendeds over there. And I have a lot of options, so come check it out. And um, I'll get a central theme into supporting themes for you over there. Have a wonderful month, Aquarians. Bye.